I've already done a video on the hyper competitive tournament ready version of SMF. This is more for the casual everyday play. This is the build that I personally like to use whenever I'm playing this deck. All throughout playtesting, I got a lot more enjoyment using this version than I did the Klozinski version. There's a lot similar. I mean, just at the core, this deck does still revolve around Scizor, Muck, and Furret, but it has a little bit more Pokemon, a little less on the trainer side of things, and then I've changed up the energy a little bit as well. So I'm just going to skip over the explanation over the importance of all the core cards since I already did that in the other SMF video, so go watch that one and then come back to this one if you're still interested in the more casual version. I'm assuming that if you're still watching this video, you already have a pretty good understanding of SMF, so let's get straight into the build. Still using that Aquapolis Scyther with 50 HP, that way you don't have to include any grass energy or have to rely on rainbow energy to attack you can get off a turn one slash if you need to it's not going to be critical in any way because you are going to be relying mostly on aquapolis scissor which uses heavy metal the more special metals you can get onto scissor the better it can take hits and the more damage it can deal with heavy metal so unlock the Jason Klazinski build, I'm going to be running a 3-3 set of Scizor. That way if one of them gets knocked out very early game before you can get a couple of metal energy on there, it's not as much of a loss because you will have two backups. And this also helps out a lot in the way of getting a Scizor on turn two onto the field. Because with only two in your deck, if one of them's prized, you're having to rely very heavily on hand refreshment and on Pokemon Trader in order to get that out. So that way, with this build, even if you get a Scizor in your prizes, you still have a really good chance of getting one on turn two when it becomes essential. Still running the 2-2 of Muck and on Furret, the usability of those doesn't really change uh, along with any changes you make to the Pokemon lineup or to the trainer lineup. So you'll be using Muck when you're up against decks that rely heavily on Pokemon powers. If you do use Muck, you'll do it after you've already utilized Furret's Scavenger Hunt in order to get those special metals into your hand onto Scizor and load it up that heavy metal attack. And as you know, this deck is very susceptible to fire decks. One of the reasons Muck is so powerful in this deck is so that you can shut down those fire Pokemon that rely on their Pokemon powers like Entei or Macargo, even when they're together in Entei Cargo. But Scizor is very weak to fire. Most fire Pokemon can Oko it. And a lot of decks opt to use Mantine, but Mantine requires two water energy, so you have to include water energy or rely on rainbow energy. What I prefer to do is just use a 2-2-2 two, two, two line of Kingdra. Kingdra can attack for one colorless energy and deal some pretty hefty water type damage. This means that you can utilize Seedra's Mud Splash attack for just a recycle energy, which also deals some minor spread damage, which can help get some easy targeted kills later on when you're using heavy metal in conjunction with a double gust. So I've fully replaced the two Mantine and the three Clefra from the Klazinski build with the 2-2-2 two, two, two lineup of Kingdra. I've reduced the Elms down to only three, but I'm still keeping the full playset of Copycat just because it is so damn useful when your opponent is refreshing their own hand with an Elm. I just found a lot more balance in using this lineup of draw power and hand refreshment with this number of Professor Elm and Copycat and Pokemon Trader all used in conjunction. I was almost always able to get a Furret and a Scizor on turn two, which is what this deck is completely hinged upon. Double Gust is in here for those easy kills, like I said. Goldberry is really going to help out on Scizor along with those special metals to where it's going to be tanking hits pretty easily just because of the special metals, but any other damage that's going to be stacked onto Scizor, you can heal off easily with Goldberry. And with a full playset of Goldberry, you can almost always have one attached to a Scizor or a Kingdra. Power Charge is used for that combo with Furret Scavenger Hunt that way. If a Scizor gets knocked out, or if you have to discard a special metal for some reason, you can get that back into your deck with Power Charge, then use Furret Scavenger Hunt to get it into your hand. Or if you've had to put a Muck into play and can't use Scavenger Hunt, you can also use Power Charge just to get it back into your deck, and then use a Copycat or an Elm just to draw through your deck a little more and get those back so that 
you're dealing the most amount of damage possible with heavy metal and also allowances or to survive longer due to the effects of that special metal. One copy of Talon Volunteers to help recycle some cards back into your deck, prevent deck outs for those long drawn out matches, full playset of the special metals that the entire deck's based around, full playset of recycle energy for use by Kingdra, and another thing I really like doing with this deck is even if Furret's scavenger hunt ability is shut down, you can still use it for spinning attack. 30 damage off of two colorless isn't bad, especially when you need that extra couple of turns to set up a Scizor or a Kingdra. And then I've also got two copies of Warp Energy and three copies of Potion Energy in this deck to give you even more utility special energy cards that can be retrieved by Furret Scavenger Hunt. And like I said, even after Scavenger Hunt is shut down by Muck if you have to play it, it doesn't have to become dead weight. You can still utilize it as a backup attacker and especially since its retreat cost is only one, you can just discard a Recycle Energy off of it You're, and get it back. You're not really losing anything in that process. And that's why I found that I much prefer this build as with the Klazinski build, it really focuses on just Scizor attacking. And the Manton is there just as a tech against fire types. You don't find yourself really attacking with it very much. But with this build, Kingdra can be just as useful as Scizor as long as you're not in a mirror match or something. And if you're feeling frisky, yeah, throw a furred out there. Do a couple of spinning attacks while you're trying to get some more metal energy onto a Scizor. This build doesn't have as many coverage options, but it still feels more flexible to me. In reference to the weaknesses I talk about in the other SMF video, this version does actually stand up better to Dark Houndoom and Pichu much better than that other version does. One of the biggest questions you may have is when you put the Jason K version up against the Drunk Shuckle version, which one comes out on top? And it is a bit up in the air. I did play test them against one another. The Jason K version does have a big advantage early on with Cleffa, but the turn loss to Eek is also another turn that I would use to get my setup done a little quicker. I don't like relying on Cleffa, and because the other version uses Cleffa, the Drunk Shuckle version doesn't need it because it already has four copies of Copycat, which is going to give you all the hand refreshment you need. Oddly, the most important difference really came down to Balloonberry, uh, which could allow the Jason K version to swap out its Pokemon a lot more easily than I could since Kingdra does have a retreat cost of two, Muck has a retreat cost of two, Scizor also has two, and so it was a lot easier to get stuck with an active I didn't quite want out there and couldn't really get the double gust or the warp energy quickly enough when I did need them. But it's also hard to make a comparison because in a mirror match like this, neither side is really gonna utilize Muck. Unless one of you happens to start the game with three or four metal energy in your hand, and so you wanna go ahead and shut down your opponent's scavenger hunt ability. The real noticeable difference didn't really come about until I was testing my own build against other decks like Meganium Exeggutor or those Houndoom builds where sometimes Kingdra's consistent damage, just dealing 30 every turn uh, for one energy, became more useful than having to rely on a three energy attack on Scizor, even though it was a huge heavy hitter. And getting rid of those three water energy, which I feel kind of cluttered up the deck a little bit, in favor of more special energy cards that could help you out in more situational scenarios and let you rely more on Kingdra's consistent attacks, as well as Furt's spinning attack, which I used a lot more in this build than I ever thought to do with the Jason K build. And I really don't like using that Legendary Collection muck in this format. It really becomes dead weight in a lot of scenarios and up against a lot of the other archetypes in Neo One. So unless you specifically know that you're going to be up against powerhouse decks that rely on Pokemon powers, I would say drop the muck completely. I mean, it's going to be useful against your Macargo decks, of course, but also some stuff like Feraligator, Parasect, or Dark Gengar. Dropping muck isn't going to mean an auto loss to any of those decks except for an Entei Cargo deck. That being said, the next Scizor deck that I'm going to cover is very heavily reliant on Pokemon powers, 
and so it's kind of hard to tell too what kind of environment you're playing in because the Neo on format now is much broader and expanded and diverse than it would have been in 2003 where this deck was the pinnacle of deck building. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you think about my personal preference in the running of SMF? Let me know how you prefer to run this deck. Stay tuned for yet another Scizor deck coming soon to Neo On. If you've got any Neo On deck requests, toss those down in the comments. Links to socials in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.